Hi, this is your five minute geography lesson. We're covering theme one, element five, waterfalls and gorges. Get those exercise books out. I'm Mr. S and I'll be your five minute teacher. A waterfall is a drop or a nick point in the long profile of the river. Essentially, it's a significant change in the elevation of the river's course. We're gonna start off by looking at where we'd find waterfalls on the long profile. So we know from a few lessons ago that vertical erosion mainly happens along the upper course of the river. And if we know that a waterfall is a significant change in the height, the elevation of the river, then it stands to reason that vertical erosion is going to be the cause. So waterfalls are found in the upper course. But how do they actually look on the long profile? Well, here's an example. So this is still the long profile of the river, so this black line at the top represents the river's course. And here's the nick point. So this is the point where there is a significant change in the height. So that there is the waterfall that the water is going to cascade over before continuing along its journey towards the mouth. Let's have a look at how this actually forms though. So we've got a couple of cross sections of a waterfall here. And you'll notice first off that there are two different shades of rock. We've got a lighter shade at the top and a darker shade at the bottom. So the lighter shade at the top is a harder rock. That means it's more resistant to erosion and it's not going to erode as quickly, whereas the softer rock will. So the water is flowing along at the base of this hard rock. It's not going to erode very quickly, but how does it actually get to the softer rock in the first place? Well, there's a few ways that this may happen. There may be a natural stopping point in the rock, so this hard rock might naturally stop and it may continue on as softer rock, in which case the erosion would happen at that point. It could be because there's a change in the relief, the shape of the land, or it could just be because over thousands and thousands of years, erosion has taken place on this hard rock and has managed to erode down until it meets the soft rock. But at the point where it does meet soft rock, what's gonna happen is this is gonna erode a lot quicker than this at the top. So let's have a look at what that actually looks like. So we're going to move on a few thousand years now, a few hundred years. You can see that the soft and the hard rock are no longer meeting at the edge because what's happened is this water is now cascading over, it's falling and hydraulic action, so that's the force of the water hitting against the sides of the rock and abrasion, which is the sandpaper effect, have eroded the supporting rock underneath. Now there are words that we'd use to describe this. So the bit that hangs out over the top, we call an overhang. The eroded softer rock underneath is being cut away and that's called an undercut. And where the water actually falls and cascades, hydraulic action is taking a huge toll on this area and it creates this deep pool underneath, which we call a plunge pool. Now, there is a significant issue that's gonna happen here. As you can see, this is harder rock. It's heavier, but it's also now becoming less supported because this softer rock is no longer there. So we'll go again, we're going to flash forward, and you can see here the dotted line represents where that rock was once at, but because it's no longer supported and the hard rock is heavy, it's dense, it's going to eventually collapse under its own weight. It's eventually going to collapse under its own weight. And so this rock ends up in the plunge pool, and you can see now that the hard and soft rock are roughly at the same distance apart again as they were in the very first cross section that we showed you. So what's going to happen now is that process is going to continue and repeat. So you can see each successive drop of the hard rock and the undercut. So you can see where this cross section once started and now that's where the waterfall used to fall. But now it's all the way back here. So this is called retreat. So the waterfall is moving backwards towards the source of the river. So over thousands and thousands of years, the waterfall is go the point where the water falls is going to move back constantly. So let's have a look at one more example here. So this is the River Tees. This is high force. And you can actually see some example here. So we've got this light shade of rock at the top is actually the harder rock. And you can see underneath the, un uh, the undercut of the softer rock and high force the actual waterfall the drop would have been over here somewhere over thousands and thousands of years ago but 
it's moved back as the waterfall retreats and you've got the plunge pool here. There's one more landform we need to discuss. So as you can see we've talked about the waterfall but there are actually steep sided valley sides or cliffs on either side of the waterfall which have been created as this retreats. So you can see on my diagram here this is where the waterfall was as it's moved back it's left these steep sided edges to the channel and this is called a gorge and it's produced by the retreat of the waterfall. Well that's it for today but continue your revision by the now try it tasks and complete that for homework. Class dismissed.